everybody. Welcome to the Rotoballer YouTube channel. Here to talk fantasy football. I'm Pierre Camus, lead editor. With me is Scott the King Engel. And we're going to talk about FFPC leagues. This time, Dynasty startups because Dynasty season, well, there really is no season, right? Dynasty runs all year long. But startup leagues are now open. If you haven't got a chance to jump in on the action, now is the time. Rotoballer.com. And then you can click on the link and sign up right now. Scott, you've been putting in a lot of work on the FFPC front. Um, just put out an article as well, talking about some startup strategies. Um, before we dive into some of the ADP and the players that are worth talking about, what would you suggest for some players uh, who are new to the Dynasty game? If you're starting up a Dynasty League for the first time, uh, what's probably the most important thing that they need to know? Yeah, Pierre, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. And you can go to rotobowler.com slash FFPC and get a discount on if you're a new FFPC player that will automatically take during checkout. So make sure you check that out. Uh, my new article talks to returning and new players and give them strategies and approaches. And I think, you know, what you really have to remember is I think when a lot of people get in a dynasty league, and this is less with the savvy FFPC players though, is that you can't overemphasize youth over experience in every single situation, every single situation. You know, what you have to remember is that a lot of people have the mind, their mind, the marker for a player getting quote old end quote is 30. And that's not really true. And for maybe for a running back, but even for a running back, it's how many carries, how much tread on the tire there is. You know, a 31-year-old wide receiver is not necessarily old. A 29-year-old wide receiver is not about to get old. A 31-year-old quarterback is not old. A 29-year-old wide receiver, a 31-year-old uh, quarterback can give you another good two to three years. So I give an example in this article last year. You know, I was drafted at number five and I was coming around and I took Alvin Kamara in the first round. And the guy ahead of me, this was a super flex dynasty best ball took Joe Burrow with Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson still on the board. And to me, that kind of move is, you know, you're overemphasizing youth and you're getting hung up too much on age. You have to have a good balance of it, Pierre. When I said, Oh, I'm definitely taking Russell Wilson next because Russell Wilson was 31 at the time. Like 31 is not old for a quarterback. The guy's easy top five. So he made my choice between Wilson and Watson. And I went with Wilson. So, you know, you can't overemphasize age. Uh, you know, it's, it's, at some point, every player is going to fall off. And maybe when you get a tight decision between two players, like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire went number eight overall. You know, there was so much hype this time last year about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. But to take him at number eight over other proven players and Dalvin Cook was still on the board, et cetera. Travis Kelsey in a tight end heavy format like the FFPC where tight ends get a point and a half for a reception. That's just – it's going too heavy in on the youth movement, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, you know, you, you do want, obviously, a young core at some point. Um, you know, people always have to think long-term, right? That's the whole point of Dynasty – but when you're sacrificing the here and now to try to win two, three years from now, if you're always looking ahead, looking ahead, you're never looking right now. You're never going to win right now, right? You're always going to have the youngest yeah. team in the league. Well, the point is to win, not to have the youngest team in the league. So I agree with yeah, that. And you did mention Edward Soler. Win now. Um, yeah, well, and I'm more of a win now guy, you know, and I, I play to win now. I don't mind taking that veteran discount. You know, someone's willing to trade away their old, you know, grizzled veteran of, you know, 28 years old. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is a perfect example, a guy that, you know, after they drafted Jordan Love, think, okay, this guy, you know, he's got a one year left and that's it. People were, were selling on him and, you know, came back to bite them. But let's look at some of the early round picks here. Now we'll get to Edward Solaire actually in a second, but let's start from the very beginning. Just give me your thoughts on this based on what you just said right now in FFPC startup dynasty leagues, uh, ADP just in the month of March, since it opened up. Jonathan Taylor, number two overall pick. And I mean, Jonathan Taylor's going before Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara. What do you feel about that? I think that's a little too rich for me. And I understand upside and I understand the high stakes mentality. Whereas, you know, you want to go for that home run type of player that could be a real difference maker. But 
And Taylor's looking really good coming into year two. But number two overall over guys like, well, you know, you can make, I guess you can make a case for Kamar, you know, not playing with Drew Brees. But if he plays with Jameis Winston, uh, but, but Dalvin Cook, if he stays healthy to me, is the number one running back in the league. And him and McCaffrey have already proven it. You know, Jonathan Taylor's still got to prove it over a full season. So to me, you know, that's the decision where you're saying, okay, I'm definitely taking the youth over the proven player. And I don't know if I do it. I, you know, over Barkley, I could see it because Barkley always gets hurt. But, you know, over Dalvin Cook, who stayed mostly, mostly healthy last year, and Christian McCaffrey, whereas the injury for one season could be an aberration. He's already proven he could be the number one running back in fantasy football. I don't know if I could do that. You know, for me, whether it's a yearly or a dynasty league, uh, you know, I want the guy who's a little bit more proven. I want to see if Jonathan Taylor can do it wire to wire. And that's, let's not forget, they re-signed Marlon Mack. They still have Mahim Hines there. So he's still got to be proven he's worried, worthy of that lofty pick. You know, I would not be shocked if Ezekiel Elliott with Dak Prescott this year outperforms Jonathan Taylor. So I don't know if I could do it at number two. Do we know for the rest of his career that he's going to be a pure workhorse number one running back? I don't think we know that. I actually couldn't agree more. You know, in redraft already, even though there's not really a lot of redraft leagues going on, uh, you know, nobody's drafting yet, but there are some mocks uh, I've taken part in. And, you know, I'm not taking Taylor in the top half of the first round. I got Barkley, Cook, Kamara, Zeke all ahead of him. In Dynasty, think, okay, well, he's got the youth advantage. But again, is he really going to outperform Dalvin Cook? it's not a guarantee. And, uh, you know, I could see the case over Barkley and Kamara for those reasons you mentioned the injuries and, you know, that Saints offense might be totally different without Drew Brees. Um, but number two, I, I think that's jumping the gun just a little bit. Um, and now, now on the same token at wide receiver, I, I, Justin I would Jefferson. rather take Travis Kelsey, you know, no, well, that's knowing, true. Uh, FFPC. You got to remember that tight end. FFPC for the point and a half for a tight end. I'd rather take Travis Kelsey. Absolutely. Agree with you there. What about wide receiver? You got Justin Jefferson is the number one receiver going off the board ahead of Devontae Adams, ahead of Tyree Kill, and ahead of your boy DK Metcalf, um, who I would have as my number one dynasty receiver. But what do you think about Jefferson? Is he worth the number one slot? I wouldn't take Jefferson and Metcalf over Hill and Adams. You know, again, that's a point where you're taking the youth over the proven experience to the point where I disagree with it. Uh, you know, Devontae Adams. He's not close to being done. And, you know, he's a target hog. The Packers have shown that they really, you know, they, they didn't go out and get Will Fuller, but, you know, that's a cap thing. But, you know, he's going to be that target hog every year and put up those huge numbers. That's proven. That's money in the bank right there. I can't pass on that. Tyree Kill, the, nobody has more upside in fantasy football at wide receiver than Tyree Kill. I can't take Justin Jefferson based off him just over one year because he's younger. And as much as I, I like Metcalf, you know, I can see, you know, Jefferson Metcalf, you know, it's almost a draw. You know, maybe Jefferson would be more consistent than Metcalf. Maybe Metcalf has a little bit more upside. To me, you know, they're, they're all, they're almost, it's, it's a dead heat to me, Pierre. But there's no way I could take him over Tyree Kill and Devontae Adams. To me, this is a mistake in a dynasty league, you know, a proven top player over one guy who's done it one year in Justin Jefferson. And not that he can't do it again, but Tyree kills not close to the end. Devonte Adams, not close to the end. You know, to, to me, it's, that's reaching a little bit, you know, it's putting a little bit too much emphasis on the age. And you have to realize too, again, it, it's the most important thing for a receiver Who's getting them the ball, right? He's still tied to Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't look like he's done. Um, you know, you have Pat Mahomes, he throwing it to Tyree Kill. Kirk Cousins is a fine quarterback, but how do we know he's going to be around in Minnesota, you know, throwing the ball to Justin Jefferson long term? And uh, it's just not quite the same level of upside, like you said. So I get the age thing, but look, to me, it's DK Metcalf because – Jefferson, believe it or not, 21. Well, Metcalf's only 23. To me, I prefer Metcalf not just because of age, but also I actually think he could emerge as the number one receiver in fantasy this year. And so 
Really? I would take a chance on him. I love DK Metcalf. You know that, all right? I do. When I was screaming for the Seahawks to draft him in the first round, and they, they traded up. I got so excited. But there's no way I'm taking him over Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill. It just yeah. – you know, he's not going to have that kind of weekly production, and he doesn't quite have the upside of Hill. Uh, you know, the Seahawks are still going to throw the ball a lot this year. They're going to have nice offensive balance. And DK, DK Metcalf, he's starting to remind me. People talk about Calvin Johnson. I don't see that comparison. To me, he's more of like a Julio Jones type uh, who might score a little bit more often. And I see the upside, but uh, – I don't think he's going to be quite as consistent as Adams or, you know, quite as, you know, massively explosive as Hill. See there, it's, it's so close at that point. I mean, you know, you, you can't really argue against any of those guys. Um, and that's where I could see an argument where, you know, you say, well, if your team is more of a win now mode, you prefer the guy like Adams or, you know, if your team, maybe your team isn't close to contending, you're playing for next season, which I never do. Uh, but, you know, maybe you just want the youth, but. Um, the, the thing about cool. Metcalf, though, and where I can see where you're coming from is, though, is Metcalf's been so good so far, and he's not a finished product. You know, he's he's still got to improve his, as a – as you know, he I think he's got to clean up his route running and his routes a little bit more. And he still hasn't learned – quite learned the art of winning the jump ball. Maybe he won't do that because Russell Wilson doesn't throw a whole lot of 50-50 balls, and that's why – have the Julio Jones comparison, but you know, and he has some drops. There are some things that DK Metcalf is still working to correct. So the upside is through the roof. Exactly. And then that's exactly what I like about him is the fact that he's still getting better. So I, we haven't even seen his true ceiling yet. At least I don't think so. Um, now let's get to Edward Solaire. We mentioned him earlier. Okay. So you think people would have learned after last year, but it seems like people are just still stuck on the fact that he's on the chiefs and he's the guy they wanted right now. His ADP is 21 overall. He's going ahead of guys like Aaron Jones and Austin Eckler. I kind of know where you're going to lean with this, but uh, let's hear it from your mouth. Do you think that that's a mistake taking Edward Slayer of those two guys? A lot of those rookies got off to slow starts. He did start well though. He wasn't one of them though, but you know, a lot of the rookies last year really had to deal with uh, not, not a regular training camp, no regular exhibition games either, Pierre. Uh, and we very inconsistent for Clyde Edwards Hilaire last year. I think he's only going to get better. But Austin Eckler is, you know, he's, he's more proven. Aaron Jones is a touchdown machine. He's more proven. And to me, you know, the running game is the sec is secondary in the Kansas City offense. So I like Edward Solaire. I think he's going to get better. But to me, give me the proven guy every time if if he's not old. You know, and it's not like Aaron Jones is 30 years old or Austin Eckler is is 30 years old. You know, I don't know off the top of my head how old Austin Eckler is, but I don't think he's close to the end. No, not at all. But um, you know, I was, I'm a guy, I had zero shares of Edward Taylor last year. I saw he was being overvalued. Um, and I think some people are feeling like they can, you know, kind of recoup that value by drafting him again this year. or feel like this is the year and I'm, I'm still not with, I'm still off it. Like, the way he's using that offense, he's never going to be a breakout fantasy running back just because the touches aren't going to be there. It's still a pass heavy offense. So give me the guy like Aaron Jones, who now probably will even get more touches with Jamal Williams gone. Um, or Eckler, there's still no competition, you know, with him at, at running back there. So, yeah, yeah. even in Dynasty, I still Did we forget Eckler. Austin Eckler is only 25 years old. You know, it's exactly. And with Jones, I think you know Dylan's going to play a role there, but Jones is incredibly efficient. Right, exactly, and tied to a pretty good offense. Of course, they all are, but yeah, give me those two guys. And then to finish with the whole youth movement thing. What do you do if you're doing a startup uh, right now, if you're drafting before the NFL draft, you don't know where these rookies are going to land right now, Najee Harris going 18th overall before those guys we just mentioned, obviously he's got the youth advantage. Obviously we know that, you know, he's got great potential, but we have no idea where he's going to land, what his role is going to be, how he's going to transition. How do you feel about taking rookies in general, especially that early when you don't know where they're going to play? Again, this is the mistake that you can make in a dynasty league. Do you lean too heavily towards the youth? Well, you know, that guy's 
four or five years younger than Austin Eckler, you know, I'll get him for 10 years. You don't have to look six, 10 years down the line, you know, look at now and maybe three years from now, because so much changes in the NFL from year to year, you know, you have to, you know, take, take your telescope and don't go seven, eight years down the line, you know, look at now for the next three years. You, you, you don't want to be worrying about, you know, 2025, 2026, you know, the, like you said, Pierre, these guys don't have teams yet and they're totally unproven. And what kind of preseason are they going to have? Hopefully it'll be more normal, but I can't take a guy who's never played it down in the NFL over somebody who's proven at a high level, like, like Austin Eckler or Aaron Jones. To me, that's just veering too much in the direction of youth, like we've been saying. Now, look, I get it. You know, I, I want younger guys it's, at some point. You know, I'm, I'm not going to take, uh, you know, I was, I'm not, I'm not going to take, you know, a running back who's maybe 30 with a lot of tread on his tires. But at the same time, you know, I'm not going to pass on a 26, 27-year-old guy who's, who's shown that he's at the top of his game either. Absolutely. And look, what my, my approach to this is I'm passing on those first couple early round guys but I'm targeting some of those mid to late round values because, you know, after the draft, all the rookie ADPs jump up, right? Dramatically, especially for some. And so the guy that you think could hit, think might be a good value. I'm talking this year right now, you know, maybe a guy like uh, a Trey Sermon, you know, or a Kylan Hill who might be a valuable, maybe not a stud running back, but a guy who might be a really good value later on. I'd rather take a chance on them, you know, as my third running back than to, basically hitch my wagon to Najee Harris and he's it. He's going to be the next star of the league. Well, I have no idea if that's even going to happen. All right. Enough youth talk. Let's go to some risers and followers. Now uh, looking at last year versus this year, some established guys and even just some recent movement in ADP since free agency started, because we know a lot of things have changed just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I want to start with Jalen hurts because we went from knowing that he's the next big thing uh, the next mobile quarterback who's going to be a fantasy stud to, oh, they're going to draft a quarterback and replace him to, no, he's the guy again. At least we think so. Um, what do you think about Jalen Hurts now going almost in the top 100 overall in Dynasty? Do you trust him enough that you would make him a pick in your Dynasty squad? He spent a second round pick on Hurts last year. That's a significant investment. Uh, you know, and now it's clear that like, he's going to get the at least get this year to show what he can do. Because if not, they have draft capital for next year, maybe to pick a quarterback. So, you know, Jalen Hurts still has to show it over a full season. But, you know, to me, he's about, you know, my 11th ranked quarterback heading into this season because of the mobility. And uh, I think they have a lot of confidence in him. So I'm fine with where he's going. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think that's about right. Right now, he's going as a quarterback 12 in FFPC Dynasty Startups. Uh, you can't put him in the top 10. There's no way you can do that just yet. But I do think he's the real deal. Like you said, they, they're they going to see what he's got. He'll have a long leash. Um, hopefully, they add at least a weapon or two. Um, and that's the main thing, if they get another receiver to help him out. Um, but he's got that running ability. I mean, right there, that's going to give you a high enough floor. Yeah. So I, I feel like he's going, it's, it's just about right. If you're going to wait on quarterback, at least for a single quarterback league, then I, I think he's the guy that you can, well, maybe trust is a strong word, but yeah. They don't um, get enough receivers. Maybe turned out to be Lamar Jackson. That's not too bad for fantasy football. That's still not too bad. And look, he, he can sling yeah. it. We definitely saw that in his little uh, um, tryout last year. Uh, now a guy I kind of feel opposite about Brandon Ayuk. He's now going close to pick 50 overall, and we don't know what's going to happen here because it looks like the Niners are going to draft a rookie quarterback. Uh, still not sure which one, but look, I kind of feel like people are overreacting because he did what he did last year. He looked impressive, but this was with Debo Samuel out almost all season, with George Kittle out the second half of the season. Again, could have a rookie quarterback. I kind of feel like his ADP is getting a little too rich. I can see that, you know, I bump them back maybe about 15 spots at least for me. I think there's definitely upside there, but I like Debo a lot. You mentioned Kittle will be back. Uh, you know, we have to see who's going to play quarterback. Garoppolo can be steady for them. Uh, you know, if a rookie comes in, we got to find out who it is and how they fit, et cetera. I like Ayuk uh, maybe as a fantasy wide receiver three in a seasonal league. 
Uh, so for me, it's it's a little bit rich. It's it's not crazy outrageous, but it's a little bit of an overdraft for me. Yeah, to me again, and I, I what I think is crazy is that he's going so much sooner now than Debo, and I really feel like Debo should be and could be the top target on that team if everyone's healthy. Um, but even so, again, it, we we don't really know what this offense is even going to look like at this point. So, yeah, I, but I, I can see wait. what you're saying with Debo Samuel because. For Garoppolo, who's not an air out type of guy, or for a rookie, he's a yardage after the catch kind of guy. And, you know, that's, you know, high percentage passing. He's going to get a lot of yak. Right. And, and Ayuk is going to be more, um, you know, downfield routes. And he'll, he'll have more booms, but also more busts, I think, uh, depending on how it goes. But one more guy who's been rising up the charts. I'm interested in your take here. Uh, Arizona has not added a running back. They lost Kenyon Drake for agency. We'll see if they draft somebody, but right now, Chase Edmonds, maybe he's their guy. I don't know. He's now going 82 overall, uh, whereas last year he was, you know, basically an afterthought. Uh, so do you feel like he's a guy that the Cardinals might roll with? And do you think this is a good value? Or do you think people are, are just getting fooled here by the fact that the Cardinals are waiting to strike and add somebody else at running back? Well, they're not going to add anybody in free agency. It comes down to what they're going to do in the draft and where they draft a running back. So that'll be our answer. But right now I'm leaning towards Edmonds being the number one there because it seems like they have a lot of confidence in him internally. You know, there was even talk uh, towards the end of last season out of Arizona that, you know, they were ready to move on from Kenyon Drake and let him be the number one because he showed well when he's gotten the chances. So it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, Chase Edmonds, you know, be that, that player, but you know, could end up in a timeshare too. You know, he's shown some durability issues. So uh, I'm optimistic, but, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up in a timeshare either. Yeah, I mean, you've got to think, maybe not early, but maybe third round, something like that. They'll draft somebody at least to share some touches with him. But I do like the fact that, you know, his bread and butter is he's a pass catching uh, back. And, you know, that's what this offense is looking for, right? To spread the ball around. So, Maybe not the highest ceiling, but I feel like it's still decent value for where he's going. So I, I think the rise is mostly justified. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, let's go to some fallers right now. A.J. Dillon, predictably, kind of falling like a brick. And uh, Aaron Jones staying in Green Bay is, you know, the, uh, the cause of that. He was as high as the top 40 pick, which I don't know if you can believe that. Top 40 on March 1st, and now he's falling all the way to 88. But here's what's interesting is after hitting that low of 88, he's kind of creeping back up for some reason. Now he's closer to 70. Um, so maybe people are realizing, well, he'll, he'll still touch the ball a little bit. I was never in on Dylan. Do you still think there's enough value? Because then we talked about it a little bit earlier. I think, uh, I think what LaFleur wants to do is he wants to have two running backs, you know, sharing the carries, having Aaron Jones be highly efficient. Uh, but also, you know, having A.J. Dillon to be a hammer at certain times and maybe even near the goal line and when, mm -hmm. when opponents are tiring down in the fourth quarter. So both those guys are going to have a role. Jones going to be one and Dillon's going to be 1A. Uh, he'll have some flex RB4 type of appeal. Uh, not somebody who can start on a consistent basis, but, you know, I like him okay as a best ball pick. Yeah, that, that's about right. I think best ball, he'll have his moments. But yeah, like I said, I was never in on him. He's a guy who I think a lot of people got enamored with, the size-speed combination. You know, he ran a fast 40 time and uh, and then he sat on the bench most of the year. So, uh, you know, he doesn't have the pass catching that we'd like to see from like a modern running back. So he's not a guy that I have any interest in. You know, he's a better value now. But yeah, personally, I would pass. But um, let's go to another guy I thought was a really nice sneaky stash last year. Um, and this is on your account here in Seattle. Rashad Penny looked like he was going to come back. Chris Carson would be gone. He'd be the guy. And Chris Carson is, is back. Um, so now what do we do with Rashad Penny? Do you just keep holding on and think maybe he'll split some time uh, with Carson or is this a time to move on and forget about him in dynasty? I don't think you have to move on and forget about him. It's been all about health. You know, I was in a Seahawks home game in November of 2018 and saw exactly what Pete Carroll uh, wanted to do with those two running backs and, you know, interviewing them both after the game. They wanted Carson to be the hammer 
and for Penny to be the guy to attack on the perimeter. Carson's always going to be the number one, but Penny's a threat when he's healthy, really to bust a play from anywhere on the field. He can score from anywhere on the field. He's that explosive. He just can't stay healthy. So, but then again, you know, we've seen Carson come out of the game too. Uh, you know, they spent a first round pick on Penny too. So they're, they're still going to give him a chance, but you can't trust either Seattle running back to stay in the lineup when they're both there though. There could be weeks where Carson disappoints you and Penny shines. So I definitely want to look at him in best ball in a seasonal league. Uh, it's going to be a little more frustrating because it'd be unpredictable because, okay, by week you start him, he rushes for five carries for 25 yards, but then you bench him the next week and he's got 15 carries for 110 yards and two touchdowns. So uh, he's going to be, he's going to be very boomer bust every week, I think. Yeah, and, and you hit the key word there is frustrating. There's nothing worse than not knowing which guy to start or if a guy's worth starting and is he going to stay healthy? So it, it's really annoying from a fantasy standpoint that Carson just stayed. I would prefer it if he went to the Dolphins, but um, that's how it is. And so Penny, predictably, we saw uh, his ADP dropped from 114 overall all the way down to 155. So you uh, guys, at the very least, Dolphins don't know, need a running, running back. back. Miles Gaskin is fine. Oh. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> he, I mean, it wouldn't be bad to have both of them, right? A guy can dream. That's that's true. And you know, when Carson's in there. He very often plays at a fantasy RB1 level. Absolutely. I've always been a Carson fan, but apparently the, the Seahawks agree. Uh, all right. And then we talked about Arizona's offense already. Christian Kirk uh, is definitely a huge baller. Look, he was as high as 75, top 75 um, early last year. People were all excited about this offense. Um, and now they've added A.J. Green, and he had another kind of just mediocre season. He's barely in the top 200. This is a guy, though, he's still tied to Kyler Murray in this air raid offense. He's only 24 years old. Is he worth a flyer late in the draft? Definitely. I mean, A.J. Green, forget it, man. It's, it's over. He was done last year. He was done the year before that. You know, he's just a name. You, you know how you're going to know you're in a seasonal draft with somebody who's not prepared? It's going to be like the 11th round. They're going to go, uh, A.J. Green, because A.J. Green's not going to be a roster role this year. You know, he, he's, he's going to – he's Larry Fitzgerald looks like he's gone. Uh, he'll probably end up being the third receiver there. Once in a while, might make an important catch. That's about it. You know, A.J. Green's one of those big receivers who wear down quickly in their career, and it's he's kind of done right now, A.J. Green. Much as I respect him, and I hate to say this, I enjoyed watching him in his prime, you know, it's over. Christian Kirk has the upside. A.J. Green, to me, is irrelevant. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not expecting things from green. I just wonder, you know, more targets going to other receivers. Kirk to me, maybe because I was a little too in on him last year, I was expecting too much. I just see the same. He's had trouble staying on the field. And look, I, I look at what he's done when he is on, he's total boomer bust, but it's more bust than boom, 49 yards per game, his rookie season, 54 and then 44. It's just, it's just kind of plateaued. I feel like as a, you know, Fairly rosterable guy. So I know he's still got the potential, but to me, I just feel like I have to look elsewhere. But the, the problem I'm... with Kyle Amari is he throws a great downfield ball, but, you know, moving the chains and hitting those high percentage short of passes has not come easy to him. And, you know, maybe that's why they picked up Green for a reliable set of hands. And, you know, if Kyle Amari can improve and, you know, make complete more high percentage passes, I believe, you know, that can only help Christian Kirk, but, you know, Christian Kirk hasn't shown us a whole lot to rely on either. So, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, did they even need Christian Kirk and AJ Green? You just have, we've already seen it. Just throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins, Hopkins 75 times a game. And you'll be fine. Yeah. That, that seemed to work best when they just basically fed him the ball, which makes you wonder why they didn't do it more. Some games, he just, they just went away from him, but. All right, and then I feel like we have to, the elephant in the room, you know, we have to talk about it. Do you draft right now, if you're starting up a dynasty, do you draft Deshaun Watson? And if so, when do you feel comfortable doing so, if at all? I don't think I feel comfortable doing it. Uh, 
the problem with with a situation like this from a fantasy perspective is everybody can make their predictions. Nobody knows what the NFL is going to decide in terms of discipline. Not only do we not know what's happen, going to happen legally, but we don't know what the NFL is going to do in terms of suspending or disciplining him. It's way too unpredictable. And you can't predict what the NFL does in terms of discipline. Everybody tried to do that with Ezekiel Elliott a few years ago, and most people were wrong. So he's a big risk. He's somebody that I have to take at about QB 10 or 11 and make sure that I get somebody I'm confident in starting not too much longer after because there's a possibility he could miss some games. Yeah, and the other thing I look at too is this. Okay, so with all this going down, even if, let's say tomorrow, he's cleared and, and nothing happens, no suspension, it's just back to the way it was. What's the best case scenario? How many teams are going to be clamoring to, to trade draft picks and to trade guys to get him? Uh, not a whole lot. You know what I mean? Maybe that's something the Jets would do. I don't think so. They got the number two pick. Um, so what? He stays in Houston, a, a place where he's said publicly he doesn't want to be. He's got his best receivers, Brandon Cooks, and he's got, what, Chris Conley and Kiki Kuti. It's just not a good situation either way. So I feel like this point, I, I just can't do it because I know someone would take a chance on him before I would. So that's my take on it. But you're absolutely right. We have no idea what's going to happen because, um, I mean, the, the NFL, good luck figuring out what they're going to do. Look, I don't think this gets resolved before the draft. Uh, but if it doesn't, I think there's still – if things do get cleared up, I say, that, look, the Jets would have been interested, but – the, it was too close to the draft right now, and they ran on Zach Wilson, it seems. But I can imagine a team like the Bears or the Panthers or maybe even the Broncos still making a significant offer. You know, look at what the Bears offered Russell Wilson. The Seahawks turned it down because they're like, well, who's going to play quarterback for us? You're just flipping your problem to us. But if the, if the Bears offer that kind of package to, say, the Broncos – uh, I mean, to the Texans, the Texans will take it and they'll go with Terod Taylor, a quarterback. Yeah. You know what? They took on what Brock Osweiler a few years ago. You don't think they could take on Drew Locke and say, yeah, he's our guy and Tyrod is, is the bridge. I could see that happening, but we'll see if anything happens at this point. That's yeah. Watson so could still get traded to a place like Chicago. Mm-hmm. I think everybody really wants him to go to Chicago because we really want Chicago receivers to be good, but I don't know. Allen Robinson um, will be good anyway. Yeah, well, that's true. He should be good. All right, and so that's our early look. We're talking about FFPC. Guys, we already mentioned before, if you have not tried it out yet, do it now. You still have a lot of time. Dynasty Startups, registration is open on FFPC, but go to waterballer.com and check out our link because FFPC or check out the link in the description below and you can sign up and get a nice discount. Scott will be dropping his rankings and fantasy advice specific to FFPC leagues all off season long. All right. All right. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Pierre. Always a pleasure to be with you. Rotoballer.com slash FFPC. And uh, we'll always be talking on Sirius XM fantasy sports radio on the weekends. Absolutely. All right, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, what are you waiting for? Do it now. Thanks for watching.